<coughs> so welcome to this uh, lecture on neural, on neural networks uh, fundamental concepts you will see and in today's lecture uh, we are going to see that what are uh, the what are the uh, definitions of neural network so we'll see what are the definitions we have for neural network then uh, we'll also see that uh, uh, what is uh, biological neuron uh, in context of human brain uh, how this human brain actually works and how biological uh, biological neuron is uh, there what it does then we'll see the model of a biological neuron so neuron is basically a unit of a neural network so we'll see model of a neural network First, we'll see the biological one, and then we are going to see the uh, neuron model or a neur uh, neuron model uh, in a mathematical sense. Okay, so these are the things we are going to do in today's lecture. So, <coughs> uh, let's uh, see what are the definitions first. So, if you see there, we can have two kinds of definitions for neural network. So definition one, you can say it is a class of mathematical algorithms to produce solution for some specific types of problem. Okay. So basically it defines neural network as a, as a mathematical algorithm or a class of mathematical algorithms. The second uh, definition is a synthetic network that emulates the biological neuron neural network of a living organ, uh, organism so this is the second definition and if you see the second definition cor corresponds to basically the philosophy on which neural networks are based and the first definition is a practical definition that how we actually implement and how we do things uh, useful things uh, through these kind of models so though we use lot of uh, um, uh, linguistic terms or terms of uh, biological uh, model but uh, essentially we uh, talk about um, talk about uh, mathematical algorithms comes here okay so we'll go to the next one so if we see that uh, artificial neural networks are though they are inspired by inspired by uh, uh, the biological phenomena but still the correspondence will yeah, with the real, real neural net systems is quite weak okay uh, both in terms of model as well as in problem solving capability so you, you uh, we should not uh, take them as equivalent to a human brain because sometimes this this uh, this um, terminology actually suggests that it is something uh, similar to human brain in either in in terms of model or in terms of problem solving capability it is not a, not so powerful uh, so if you see definition one that is uh, basically a mathematical model it would be more appropriate uh, in the present context now uh, in this uh, let's try to see how this biological neural and their uh, neurons and their artificial models work for human brain okay so if you see in a human brain you have a central nervous system this is central nervous system uh, this is essentially the brain part which you have and then there are motor organs so hand legs etc that is you can say a kind of actuators or effectors in human being so we are trying to uh, model human being itself in terms of some some engineering system and the, the third one is there is some kind of receptor or sensory organs like eyes nose uh, ears etc and if you see this uh, basically uh, there is some effectors and you have some some kind of some kind of receptor sensory receptor taking inputs from the external world and and then it goes to the central nervous system and central nervous system 
give rise to some kind of signals for effectors and this motor uh, organs basically um, do the work and some feedback is taken internally and some feedback is taken from external to the system and that is how basically our uh, our uh, brain systems or basically our systems uh, work uh, if you talk about human being and uh, things and and if you see here this number is a huge number so this many neurons are there in human brain to to this uh, do this kind of uh, this kind of uh, work so <clears throat> so the basic element of uh, the brain or uh, basic element which performs this work is a biological neuron and uh, we'll just try to see what is this biological neuron because our models are based essentially on this but they are only uh, based in linguistic terms only uh, basically that will be a mathematical model so if you see these are the this is a neuron and this is the main cell body where you have nucleus and these are the places from where the neuron is taking the inputs okay and if you see it is axon from other neurons so the input may come directly from the other neurons or it may come independently from the sensory organs so these are basically input takers so there are certain uh, things which you can say they are inputs they take input either from other neurons or uh, from directly from the from the uh, what you call sensory organs then some kind of this all this input if you see are directed towards a single place which is called the cell body and this cell body uh, depending on what inputs received by it gives some kind of output and that output is basically uh, that goes from axon and that output is either you will say normally it comes in two form either it is on or off so either it is plus one or minus one if we uh, plus one or zero or one or zero as we talk about that is up uh, after uh, talk about the output of axon and again this goes to the next neuron and this this joint is basically called a synapse so this is the place where uh, <coughs> a cell body this is also this is all synapse so this is the place where cell body is connected to other neurons or inputs uh, through a synapse so there is a place here on which some kind of interaction take place in the synapse okay this is uh, because it is again and again used so this synapse becomes an important for now if you see this is very basic model which was actually you can say it was the it was first proposed model of a neuron and uh, it was proposed by McCullough Pitts and it is called McCullough Pitts model and basically if you see it tries to mimic at least uh, in figure as a neuron so these are the places which is you can call their synapse and uh, there is output so axon output and this you can say a kind of a cell body and this are called synaptic weights and uh, this output depends on the input and the individual weight assigned to these inputs and if this uh, multiplication or what you call weighted multiplication of input and the weights uh, are summed up here and if they are greater than or equal to the threshold then it fires as one and if it is less than or equal to this threshold then it doesn't fire and it is zero so that is how this uh, this simple uh, uh, neuron was uh, was actually modeled and what uh, is what uh, in this model what pits called here it's these are called synaptic weights and these are input and this whole is called an input layer so because it forms kind of a layer and these are individual inputs here so sometimes when you talk about time we say this is a one input 
given at a particular time and sometimes we also say that it is n inputs so depending on the context if you are talking about uh, in giving input at a particular time then we say this whole set of input is one input and when we talk about individually we say that these are inputs and then these are synaptic weights which are associated with each of the connectors here okay connectors to the cell body and this synaptic weights actually uh, does this way uh, does this calculation and gives this neuron response either equal to 1 or 0 depending on the input given at a particular time uh, then this is uh, same thing shown here uh, now this the, if you see the earlier one it was uh, Mikolo Pitts model which actually uh, mimicked the actual uh, model of a neuron because uh, the human brain normally uh, human neurons normally respond in this way either they give only two inputs binary either it fires or it doesn't uh, but uh, uh, in other cases it was later on generalized this neuron was generalized because this uh, neuron uh, had a very uh, very uh, limited uh, uh, thing and uh, in a human brain you if you see the number of in neurons are 10 to e raised to power 11 whereas when we talk about here we are hardly going to get that kind of neurons so a generalized neuron was also modeled based on the same concept you again have an input layer and the same synaptic weights and this time this uh, output is not 0 or 1 but basically it is some kind of function some kind of function of this uh, W transpose X that is uh, weight matrix multiplied by X so if this is weight 1 2 and weight n and this is x1 x2 and xn so if you see these two are multiplied and then you have some kind of a function associated with this uh, wt into x which is essentially if you see it is this but this time it won't be one or zero it will it will depend on the values of this okay so that is uh, what we say is generalized neuron is uh, a basic neuron is basically have uh, will have only two output either it will be one or zero uh, <clears throat> so let's now try to see the mathematical uh, concept here so this is input layer if you see this is the input layer here is it is essentially a it can be modeled as array of uh, values x1 x2 up to xn and this is the weight matrix here again it is also an array for a particular new if you have one new neuron you will have as many input as xn so w1 w2 up to wn and uh, uh, the output will be dependent on multiplication of these two arrays so that is how a mathematical model of a single neuron this is for a single neuron you can have several neuron in this but we'll talk about single neuron first and uh, multiple neurons will follow after that <clears throat> so here I am trying to show a basic calculation if you see uh, basic calculation here is if you have a input here and a neuron here then you can calculate the net value what is net value that is omega transpose into X or W transpose it into X and uh, the output will be some function of WTX so either it this output will be in terms of threshold then it become Macaulay Pitts model if it is 0 and 1 depending on threshold and otherwise it is a generalized model uh, that will depend on this value now so we have seen that in case of this Macaulay Pitts model it will it, it is either 0 or 1 but this generalized neuron can be of several types okay so we'll just try to see what are the different kinds of neurons which we can have so here if you see this is uh, McCullough Pitts model giving zero if it, if it is beyond threshold then it becomes one if it is below threshold then you get zero and it is zero and one concept and we call it a unipolar 
neuron because it is unipolar it is in positive domain only then again this is similar kind of neuron only the input here is that the output is one or minus one depending on the value of net so if it crosses the threshold you get plus one if it is below the threshold it is minus one and this you can call it a bipolar interesting thing this is this kind of neurons are in fact non-linear neurons also they are not continuous what you call not continuous uh, is non-continuous is i'm not getting the name uh, uh, non-continuous you can say so it is not continuous one uh, the other set of neurons could be depending on the value of net uh, you could have a linear set so exactly whatever is the value of net that is w transpose x that is what net is uh, accordingly you get the value of f net and it may be same so as one so this is a kind of neuron which is called a linear neuron other kind of neurons but this is if you see these are these are continuous okay. here this just becomes discontinuous rather. this these are discontinuous type of neurons and these are continuous uh, then other kind of neurons are possible here this is log sigmoid kind of neuron and if you see this is output is function of omega transpose x and this is model with this so for a value of particular you fix a value of lambda depending on this lambda you get different kind of different kind of slopes okay so this is essentially called a log sigmoid kind of, kind of neuron and log sigmoid neurons of course are non-linear again but they are continuous and similarly this is another way of uh, log sigmoid uh, that is tan sigmoid so it is from minus it is from zero this one is from zero to one and this is bipolar in nature so this is if you see it will be coming from minus one to plus one so this is a tan sigmoid type of neuron it is again non-linear and continuous other possibilities are also there for neurons but these are the main possibility which we come across i'll just see a small question here uh, what are two different types of models explain advantage and disadvantages of one above the other and if you have this as x and this as w that is weights then can you calculate the calculate the output of neural network uh, which is of tan sigmoid type of course here we assume lambda equal to one so for this you can write a program and find this one so i'll stop it for here